Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul with RP1 series in Kerbal Space Program 1.3.1. In this episode we have a Jupiter window coming up and so I want to turn to interplanetary probes. We have a Jupiter flyby mission here, Ceres flyby, and a Venus atmospheric probe. I figure the same probe uh, and the same launcher can be used for Jupiter and Ceres. But we do have a Venus landing possible contract here and you know the Venus atmospheric probe is probably going to end up landing anyway. So I'm going to pick that up and um, Mars will be afterwards, I think. Uh, unfortunately, you can't open Kerbal alarm clock here, can you? No. Okay, so let me pop out and then let me check the windows again. Mars is before series. Um, Mars landing though. Well, maybe that Venus probe can land on Mars too. It's not impossible. Now we just have to size up the parachutes basically. Okay, uh, we could try that. Mm, Phobos and Deimos are a little bit trickier because no parachutes for that. Uh, Lunar Space Station would be nice and um, probably easy enough, right? Right? Yeah, I mean, and that's pretty lucrative. I don't want to miss out on that, and it's giving us quite a lot of time. That's more than four years. Martian Space Station, uh, I certainly want to do, but we're not gonna do just yet, I think. Adding a power module, well, that's not giving us enough money anyway. I might add a part of power module anyway, but not to fulfill that contract. There are other flybys here that might be of interest, but we won't go for that yet. Targeted moon landing? It's not really that targeted if it's just in the lowlands somewhere. I'll, I'll ponder that one. Uh, one year. Uh, right now, lunar, la uh, lunar landings aren't the easiest thing. I mean, we've done it twice, but... And I have confidence that we could get the landing done. It's just a matter of we are building a whole bunch of other stuff in within the next year. I guess they don't take too much time to build these probe missions. But yeah, uh, at the risk of not doing anything for 60 days. How is our technology, by the way? Well, we're getting large scale avionics, mature capsules in 1968 Hydrolox engines. We should probably queue a few more things up because 441 science sitting there. I don't really like these. High resolution film cameras heavy as all heck. And then these, well, they're lunar, but we sort of done, we've already done the lunar thing in a way. Um, stage combustion engines doesn't have anything of interest until like later on I think these are just clusters of NK engines and these are lackluster at best RD 170 is all the way up here but it'll be a while I suppose if we gotta do space stations we should do them right and so we'll get the space station development one we can't unlock this because we have to upgrade the R&D building first. And we should get the Apollo dock. I mean, it's not really an Apollo docking system, but actually the real Apollo docking system is probably somewhere else. Like uh, these capsules, mature capsules, has the actual probe and drogue. But uh, we'll use those ports anyway. Would be nice. And RC up, uh, the RCS upgrade could be helpful down the road once we get to that one. Prototype nuclear propulsion. Nuclear is heavy and um, very specific usage. Uh, I think these are just supply containers and not the converters. This has some scrubbers but not converters. The converters are all the way up here, so we can wait on that. Uh, I guess we can work up the RTG line. The Jupiter probe has just really big solar panels. I don't want to have the lowest level RTGs, those are a waste. 
these are pretty expensive too. And they still don't produce that much electric charge, but I guess we'll get it over with. Uh, that's the first one that I would actually consider using, and it's still super, super expensive. Consider the rollout cost, I mean. Uh, consider the rollout cost. Okay, but maybe we'll need those. Alright, so that's technology-wise. And since we have so much technology queued up, I think I'll just time warp to the Jupiter window. Alright, so I just wanted to explain the Jupiter probe mission in here first. Uh, we've got the probe up there with a... I just decided to use the upper stage core to simplify things. So that's the upper stage avionics. I got uh, the next level of those. Um, it's uh, mature avionics already. So yeah, and then you can see the huge solar panels. A slightly tweak scaled up because I calculated that 100% wouldn't be enough and we simply don't have enough room otherwise. I already had to put the cubic octagonal struts there, so we can't have six of them is what I'm saying. Otherwise, we have an array of instruments, some of them new, some of them newly unlocked, so we'll be seeing them for the first time. Action grouped properly. There's a two kilonewton thruster here, and so we get 2,245 meters per second from the probe zone fuel. It's about one ton, and then its avionics is enough to handle uh, this balloon tank and uh, these these aren't balloon tanks because I haven't um, which got uh, tooled the tanks to this size for the balloon tanks so yeah uh, we have RD58 for the transfer or at least part of the transfer uh, the transfer will probably be completed by this I it, it could probably make a loose orbit around Jupiter and after that we've got uh, NK it's actually not the 9V anymore Hopefully the NK-19 is more reliable than the NK-9V, but we're going to find out. I'll, of course, make a backup. And then we've got an interesting arrangement down here where I clustered three of the RD-253s and pretended they had a shared turbo pump, <laughs> which the Soviets actually did. Um, they took independent engines and then rebuilt them to share turbo pumps and uh, did it like this. So hopefully it is all right. Otherwise, the RD-253 is sort of unwieldy, you know, given the turbo pump on the one side. But, uh, yep, this is the plan for the Jupiter probe, and I'm building two already. And let's take a look at the plan for the Venus probe. Now, already you can see that this is somewhat of an unconventional system, and that's largely because of that silly little turbo pump off to the side of the RD-253. And I didn't really want to put a fairing on both sides um, because, well, there's no real need for one on this side, is there? Uh, because there's no turbo pump or anything sticking out on this side. So I just put it on one side and I shifted the RD-253. It's not actually centered right now. It's actually off to one side uh, through the center of mass. Of course, it can gimbal, but uh, yep. And then, since it was asymmetric anyway, and looking odd, I decided to put a booster over here, especially since we didn't have quite enough Delta V for what I wanted to do. It's a pretty light launcher. It can fit on the 150 ton pad. And at the top, we have the Venus atmospheric portion that will also hopefully land. It's got parachutes, basic solar panels, and of course, uh, surface communitrons, which we hope will not snap or overheat and we'll be able to communicate to these surface commutrons and then we have the relay antennae on this orbital orbiter portion that will send information back. The orbiter portion has different scientific instruments than the lander except for the camera and uh, yeah we're carrying a whole bunch of them including the helium magnetometer there and uh, you can see it's got the orbiter portion has 3126 meters per second of delta V so hopefully we can make a nice tight orbit around Venus and the transfer stage and stage that completes orbit around the Earth is the RD-58 we've got here. And this time it is definitely an RD-58. And so hopefully it's going to be reliable. Uh, the RD-253 is sort of a toss-up. We've got a 2 minute and 28 second burn time on for the rating, but we've got about 3 seconds more as far as fuel is concerned. Uh, I couldn't really underutilize this. I could have used a non-balloon tank, but balloon tanks are fully utilized. 
So it's, uh, there's a little bit of clippiness going on on the side there. That may be considered somewhat cheaty, but it's just for looks. I don't didn't really mean to do that. But, uh, well, these are also bloom tanks because that's what I've got tooled at these sizes and might as well because nothing is stopping me. And then we've got an H1 because that is the cheapest engine that could fit on there. I guess I could go up to this uh, Saturn 1B H1. Is that worthwhile? Mm, 10 extra cost. Uh, it's got better ISP and a 3 minute burn time. This current one only has 2 minutes and 30 seconds. It's not going to last that long, I don't think. We should check. It's 1 minute and 45 right now. But yeah, I guess maybe, hopefully the Saturn 1B1 is more reliable. So I'll upgrade that. But the ones we already have under construction won't be affected by that. Okay, and then I think I'll try and modify this probe. It's got a uh, early controllable core on it. I want, and that handles the 0.2 tons, but I should redo the parachutes so that it can land on Mars maybe, and we'll see if it can do that. Okay, so I've edited the Venus probes so that they can also meet our Mars needs, and we've already built the Jupiter and Venus probes, and the Mars ones are underway. They're pretty quick to build, after all. Which means that really, um, if we gotta distribute upgrade points, we should probably do that in R&D. Taking a look at our technologies, well, it's not that slow to be honest. Yeah, maybe maybe the best thing to do is to upgrade our R&D facility because we're going to be hitting that wall of technology where we can't go past. And yeah, so we'll spend four million on that, so we better get those contracts done, hmm. Okay, well, anyway, so with that decision made, I think I'll hold off on building anything else until we get the space, space station development technology, and then I'll prepare the lunar orbit station that we have a contract for, and we'll try and start building that after the queue clears up. Okay, I've decided to forego building the moon station just yet because Either we do it in two launches, or we do it in one big launch, but the one big launch would require a pad upgrade, which is currently underway. So maybe I'll wait for that. We do have a lot of time before that contract is up. This is a Jupiter probe, and we are currently eight days ahead of the window. And that's because, just in case, you know, engine fails or something, and Jupiter's big, it can handle it. So it'll be able to tug us in, but just in case something happens with this, uh, we do have a backup already built, but I might want to build another backup, just in case. So anyway, uh, here we go. Ignition. And launch. Insufficient- uh-oh. Uh, somewhere down the line- well, I'm gonna need to fix that, but somewhere down the line I- I thought I had enough avionics, but I guess I removed what avionics I had. Well, fortunately, Smart ASS does not care. It seems to be a slight rotation. I get the feeling that Kerbal doesn't know what to do with um, the three engines. It's got a lot of thrust to weight ratio. And really wants to tilt, I mean, it doesn't want to turn very well, now that I've deleted that. Once again, it's all down to the VAB dialog not having the avionics warning pop up or anything. Oh, we lost an engine, but fortunately I tilted them through the center of mass and that seemed to have worked. So with just two engines, we're still good. Glad that worked out for us. Okay, separation. And ignition. Well, the NK-19 in this case has ignited. Fairings... can go. Um, 
test flight says basically three hours mean time before failure on the NK-19. We got quite a few data units carrying over from the NK-9V, so that's good. Before I forget, I'm gonna make sure the dish is targeted to Earth. You never know. Okay, looking good for orbit. And shut down. Oop. Oh, right. I don't have avionics, so I can't shut it down. I can stage, but I can't actually shut it down. Well, that's awkward. Alright. Well, um... I hope we're pointed in the right direction with the apoapsis. I doubt it. Yeah, we're not. Okay, there we go. Encounter with Jupiter. Some sort of mid-course adjustment is probably a good idea. But we're pretty close as it is. They certainly shouldn't have any problems recharging it here. They've got 25 times the requirement. Okay, ignition. Oh, 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 okay. Phew. Why is it 11D33M? I wanted the RD58. Gosh darn it. Well, it looks like some of our newly unlocked instruments have not been done around here before. Well, one nice thing about having stages that have just about the right amount of fuel is that even if you lose connection and can't shut them down, uh, it's probably okay. So in this case, we have only about 100 meters per second extra in this tank. So if I happen to lose connection because we're still rather close to the Earth, and we don't have the Omni antennae on here, I think we'll be alright. And shut down. We do have connection, so that's good. Um, we'll make uh, further adjustments. We, we don't have forward or backward thrusters right now, so we can't really do too much here. We'll have to use that two kilonewton thruster. So um, let's just stage through. Oh, I did have the, these communitrons, except uh, I suppose they would have been blocked by the other tanks, so they're not really positioned very well. Okay, let's activate all these things. And how about the magnetometer? Well, I guess doing the scans does not require deploying it? Hmm. Well, I want it deployed anyway. Though it's in the way of the thrust of the little thruster. So that's not great. All right, actually we're, we're poised to enter Jupiter SOI. It's just that we're going to be a little bit past. So what I'm going to do is rather than do a correction burn right now, I'll just build that into the to the mid course correction here. Okay, that would do the trick. Um, except I sort of want to go retrograde around Jupiter so that we have a better chance of hitting one of the moons. We'll have plenty of fuel. And that looks pretty much in line with the moons. We need a little bit lower. Oh, there we go. Ganymede encounter. Oh, that's still too high there. Hang on, Ganymede. Okay, so that's 20,000 kilometers over here, barely. And a Ganymede encounter. We'll see if we get that on the way in. But that's what we'll plot for. And the alarm is for the maneuver node. And I guess, I mean, I don't know if we need to send anything else on this window. The... 2 kilonewton thruster works, you know, it's not going to fail on us. We've got everything else set up. And if the power is the problem, we're not really going to know about that until we get there. I think I did the math right, but maybe not. Maybe just a little bit off, who knows. 
But yeah, I think I'll have the backup Jupiter probe go to Ceres instead rather than send two this time. Okay, so that is done with the Jupiter transfer window. We'll just send one out. Okay, so I fixed up the remaining Jupiter probe and retasked it for Ceres. So it's got avionics now, the proper facing thrusters, and also the antennae are uh, in a better position so that I can extend them to maintain communication. And I duplicated it, so we'll have two Ceres probes. And so, but this one is the Venus probe with its interesting setup. We'll see how this works out for us. And this setup is uh, gonna be identical for, of course, the backup as well as the Mars probes. So we'll see. Maybe we'll have to fix this. Who knows? Throttle up. SAS is on. And ignition. And launch. Well, it's going up. <laughs> it's not going sideways, you know. Yet. Got lots and lots of thrust to weight ratio here. Now, of course, this is expandable. You know, it could carry three boosters. If it can carry one, it can carry two or three. Four, you know, that gets a little bit complicated. But Okay, uh, we're passing through max Q. Things continue to look fine. Well, it's sort of naturally turning so that the booster is on the bottom. It's okay. Okay, getting ready for separation, and it's actually stable like this. Separation and separation worked fine. I was worried that uh, I have an issue once the booster went out, but nope, that was all right. I'm expecting about 3,000 meters per second from the upper stage here, so I think we're looking pretty good. Maybe a little bit too high on the time to apoapsis, though. Okay, separation and ignition. Ooh! Well, so much for that idea. Hmm. What happened there? Oh, RD-58 failed to ignite and exploded. So that was a test flight thing. I see. Okay, I was wondering. I didn't clip it or anything. I didn't do anything weird. No, uh, Tesla just decided that that needed to be exploded. I had uh, done too many hijinks already. Well, these parachutes are meant for Venus. I don't know if they're going to slow us down at all, to be honest. Yeah, I don't know if these tiny parachutes are going to do anything. Nope. Alright, well, anyway, we will try again. Okay. Here we go again. Let's hope test flight doesn't randomly explode our engine. That was really harsh, wasn't it? Not just shutting it down or anything, exploding it. Anyway, SAS on and ignition. And launch. Okay, going through max Q again. And it looks quite stable. Still gets a bit of a roll, and that's probably because of the differing aerodynamics on one side versus another. But it's not really trying to stop the roll either, but that's I guess because I haven't got this on roll zero. So I'm letting it roll. Okay, getting ready for booster separation and separation. Nice might have wanted some separatrons for the next stage, but anyway. Separation and ignition. I don't know why that always double clutches. Anyway, this time it lit. And I believe this is the RD-58, not the 11D-33M or anything like that. And fairing separation. We do need it to relight as well. Okay, about to make orbit. And that's good enough. 203 by 175. And we've got 4,158 meters per second left, so we certainly have enough 
to transfer to Venus if it reignites. Anyway, let me do the plotting and then we'll get started on that. Okay, the RCS isn't quite staged here, but I'm nervous about trying to stage it normally, so I'm going to activate it like this, but we're coming up on the burn already. Oh, those don't, do not seem to be working. That's not good. Uh, are these empty? They're empty. Shoot. I thought I'd fix that. Okay, well, here we go again, finding things out. I don't suppose I could transfer fuel. Nope. So let me just get all the RCS ports in the same place and try and stage them like that. Or maybe in two sets. Because we need a few. Oh shoot. Okay, well, it's turning anyway. I pushed shift instead of what I wanted. Okay. Alright, fine, fine. Crisis averted. Jeez. Good thing that worked. I wonder why it says stage... Oh, because the throttle is only partial. Oh, weird. So, the power situation is a little bit dubious right now. I might have underestimated here at Earth in my exuberance for all the sunshine we'd be getting at Venus. Okay, and... Shut down. Oh, a little bit too long. Anyway, but these RCS are not going to work out for us. So... Okay. And... Well, we can stage everything up to that point. Okay, good. That works. Now, we actually need to go retro a little bit, but we need to sidestep that first. I think uh, this calls for a mid-course adjustment, right? Yeah. Okay, well, that's not recharging, right? But it is during time warp, so that's okay. Phew. Alright, so... Math not that bad. Okay, let's say we do that. How much is it going to take to get into orbit? With the orbiter portion. Yeah, 1,400. We could probably get into a low orbit before deploying the lander. So that's okay. So we've got a make course adjustment in 46 days. And we have a Venus probe. And it's on its 2 kN thruster, which we do not expect to fail. So all is well. These guys are on, and we checked the power, and that is recharging. All right, back to Space Center. Okay, as it turns out, not back to Space Center because the very next thing we have to do is this maneuver with the Venus probe. So, um, luckily enough, we'll get this on its way properly. This should be close enough. I suppose some science can be done in interplanetary space. Yep. Okay, the science is on its way, and what's our Venus situation like? Uh, I think the rest we can correct once we get there, so I'll add a maneuver here uh, so that we can handle the inclination a bit. Not the inclination, the distance to Venus. Okay, now, well, <laughs> I accidentally put it in a barbecue roll, but when it needs to, it's recharging. Uh, yep. And this will be an alarm for us. Is it the next alarm? No. The Mars window and the Ceres window are first. Okay, so I think I'll wrap up this episode with this launch to Mars with the same sort of rockets 
that we launched to Venus, except of course the payload is somewhat different this time. I also checked that the there was fuel in the RCS tanks on the upper stage there. So Thorlop SAS is on and ignition. And launch. This time, not a nighttime launch, thankfully. Well, all is well with our unconventional setup here. It could be a bit awkward if we lose an engine. Though you'll note that the H1 here is tilted so that if we did lose the main engine, Right now, it could probably continue going, but of course only for 14 seconds. Okay, separation. Okay, separation. And ignition. Ignition. Okay, and shut down. We have made orbit 224 by 159. And I will plot for Mars. Okay, we do have a plot for Mars, but it looks like we're a little bit early with this probe. Uh, so it's taking a little bit more than it ought to. If we waited like a week, it looks like uh, MechJeb thinks that we'd have a better deal. Well, I can't show it now because we're we already have a escape plot I think oh, oh uh, it's still here you can see the dark blue region there is actually after a couple of weeks and that would get us a nicer delta V but this is fine too we just have to use a little bit of the two kilonewton thruster to get over there let's see if the RD58 will reignite and I should do all the antenna stuff before I forget of course And is it settled? Yes, it is. Ignition. Okay, we're on our way. Probably a little bit late there. Now, of course, because this is going to Mars, this has larger panels, not just the uh, flat ones. Okay, approaching the end of this stage. Okay, all this business can go at the same time, right? And separate. Separate. And... Little thruster. Yeah, it might be tough to actually make orbit around Mars, but um, this will still be swinging by while this is making its landing, so it'll be alright. And we'll get new science because we have new instruments on board. Ooh, oh, I just briefly said above Earth's shores and I could have maybe gotten some extra science around here too, but I wasn't quick enough. Shores, always difficult. Uh, okay, looks like we've got a bit of a correction that we need to do. Uh, Alright, it was going too easy for us. That's a pretty big gap. Is it going to close? Well, it looks like a little bit more thrust in this direction will close it. So at least we have an encounter. And we'll probably... Oh, that's too much. We'll probably need an inclination correction along the way as usual. Okay, so the correction burn will be in 98 days and take about 25 meters per second. And I'm going to add that alarm and get rid of this Mars window this time. I think I'm satisfied with this probe and uh, not sending a backup. I don't think it's gonna make orbit very easily. Okay, so that's orbit. How much? 3000. So no, I don't think uh, the orbiter is going to make orbit, but it'll drop off the part of the mission that'll actually make the landing and that's the important part. Let's make sure the power is okay. I mean, it must be with these huge panels. Yeah, easily replenishing. 
So, we got a uh, Jupiter mission launched, a Venus mission launched, and a Mars mission launched. I think we're doing pretty well with, th with this episode. So, on that note, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.